The devastating problem created by this rather unremarkable looking fish began in a tank like this. Tilapia were popular as tropical aquarium fish until they were banned in the 1970s. The authorities realised that these fish could pose a threat to the native environment of Australia, so they made them illegal. Ironically, this move may have led to the mass deliberate release of tilapia into Australian ponds, creeks and rivers. And since then they've been slowly spreading to other catchments and they are the most serious aquatic pest that we have here in Queensland. Today, tilapia have become so abundant they're often referred to as the cane toad of the waterways. But because they lurk below the surface, by the time they're detected, it's often too late to eradicate them. Once they get truly established, um, it, is, it is impossible. And there are creeks around here where all you catch is tilapia. Now, an astonishingly quick new way to find tilapia, without even sighting them, promises not only to help stop the spread of this pest species, but it may also revolutionise how we investigate life underwater. It's too late for the Ross River in Townsville. This river has more invasive fish species than any other river in Australia. The river is in an urban area, the weather is tropical and the water is warm. So it's a lovely home for tropical aquarium fish. At the last count, this river had 20 species of exotic fish in it. Today, we're out to find tilapia by electrofishing. Our rubber waders are protecting us from the electrical current that's coming from Dr Damien Burrow's backpack and into the water around us. Which comes through the wand here mm -hmm. and is emanated at that ring. And it stuns all fish within about a metre or so radius and uh, doesn't kill them, just immobilises them so we can catch them in the net. So there's lo lots of tilapia in here? There are plenty of tilapia in here, yes. Okay. We'll get one in a moment. All right, I got, got one. Yep. Oh, <laughs> got him. Oh, he's big. Yes, that's a Mozambique mouth brooder. Uh, they come from Africa. Uh, these fish are incredibly good at building really large numbers and they can survive in poor water quality. Uh, they're very aggressive, so basically end up with a really large population of aggressive fish uh, living in, in our creeks, which actually outcompete and chase away our natives. Tilapia can tolerate a wide range of temperatures, put up with high salinities and low levels of oxygen. They were originally thought to be herbivores, uh, but enough of our, our research has shown that they actually quite readily consume uh, native fishes, including barramundi. Look, don't go too far, sorry. Damien's main goal is to get to the front line of tilapia invasions before they take hold. And that's meant countless frustrating days looking in all the wrong places. But typically, we would actually have to take a boat and use nets, uh, or we can use traps, or we can apply electricity to the water, which is one of our favoured technique. And you might go to a water hole at considerable expense and not find them, but it doesn't mean they're not there. It just means they're low abundance and you haven't found them. Now, detecting tilapia has become much easier. In fact, surveying a field site is as simple as this. Every bit of information about what lives in this waterway is contained here in this bottle. You might not see anything, but this water is brimming with DNA. As tilapia go about their daily business, they shed cells in their mucus, scales and faeces, and each of those cells contains DNA. Hey, do you get some more? Hopefully all full of tilapia DNA. Aquatic geneticist Dr Dean Jerry and his team have developed a technique which can extract and identify DNA from all species of tilapia in a water body, just days after they arrive. It's actually very simple. All we do is we filter the water and the vacuum pump just essentially draws the water through that filter membrane and any cells or any biological material that is in that water will get trapped on the filter membrane. Back in the lab, DNA is extracted by dissolving the cells on the membrane into solution. A primer is added that amplifies only tilapia DNA and it's run through a standard polymerase chain reaction, ending in a positive or negative result. 
So you see here, wherever we have the band, that is where we have tilapia DNA. And so you can see we've got tilapia present in the Ross River, in Lake Eacham, Tinaru. Can you tell how many tilapia are in each place? So where we have the brighter bands usually means there's lots of DNA, whereas in other regions where the DNA band isn't quite as bright, it means that we don't have as much DNA in our reaction. So it allows us to detect where there's only a few individuals in a water system, and therefore where you have those few individuals, that's usually the invasion front. Tilapia have only just colonised those waters. It's a type of tool that we can go out into the field very quickly, sample large numbers of water bodies very cheaply. That's a revolution for me. That's certainly going to turn the way we do things upside down, but for the good. It's a positive revolution for us. But there's no reason to stop at tilapia. The potential for using the eDNA technique as a survey tool is virtually limitless. Conceivably, when we take a water sample, in that water sample, if there are cells from all the organisms that are in that water system, we should be able to extract the DNA and detect them. So this is the holy grail, I guess, for an ecological geneticist. It'll only be a few years away, I think, where we'll be to the point where we can take a single sample of water and work out all the native fishes, all the pest species, the turtles, the crayfish, the crabs, frogs, everything from one water sample. It is certainly the most promising uh, game-changing technology that I've seen in my 20-plus years um, as a freshwater ecologist, yes. Thank you.